Hello, and welcome to ITS Partners webinar, Service Graph Success with Armis and ITS. On behalf of ITS and Armis, we are thrilled to be discussing the Service Graph Connector and Readiness tool today with you all. I am Rachel Skinner, Digital Marketing Specialist at ITS, and it is my privilege to kick off today's webinar and introduce our speakers. First, we have Jay Weigard, Director of Innovation at ITS, as well as Andrea Veenstra, Developer at ITS. And finally, Peter Doggart, Chief Strategy Officer at Armis. Let's dive into the presentation. Peter, I'll pass it to you. Can you give us an explanation of how the Armis platform works? Yeah, thanks, Rachel, and I'd love to. I thought it might be good to start with, why does Armis exist in the first place? What are we trying to solve for? And what's the mission of the company? And, and how do we go to solve for that? So first of all, if you look at what's been happening over the past decade, we are living in a world which is vastly different now as we think about the assets in our environment. And if we look around us, the endpoints or the assets, the devices in our environment have changed considerably from the old days of just laptops and servers to now we have many, many thousands and hundreds of thousands of different devices out there or classes of assets. And it's important to understand what is in the environment. And this is exactly what Armis was designed to do from the outset. It was designed to see and provide unified asset visibility, and then layer on top of that a risk management system. So that what we can do is fundamentally eliminate the security blind spots that come from all these new devices and assets entering our network. So how do we do it? Well, we do it very, very simply by providing a very easy way passively in real time without any agents to see every single device, every single asset, be it on a wireless network, a wide network, on a cellular network, off the network, it doesn't matter. We can literally see everything on the network and provide incredible accuracy down to the asset type, the level, the operating system to provide a complete unified understanding what's on the network. And we simply do this by tapping into existing infrastructure, existing APIs, as well as listening to the network traffic. And Armis has built up an incredible machine learning backend data set that can fingerprint these devices literally in seconds and then provide all that rich context, all that knowledge to things like ServiceNow. So in addition, it's what we can also do is overlay additional insights into what those devices are doing or what those assets are doing in the context of the environment. Are they acting a little bit strange? Are they acting with potential threats? And uh, are there additional vulnerabilities that we should be mitigating? We're providing basically all this richness uh, to help the CIO and the CISO and the IT teams frankly understand, are these things going to be a problem um, in the environment? And how much of a risk are they going to be adding? And we, we again, we provide all this information to um, ServiceNow through our Service Graph Connector. Peter, what's the biggest pain point that CIOs run into in your experience? Yeah, great question, Jay. What we are seeing from our customers is the CMDB is frankly a mess. And what we're trying to do, because we, we are seeing just a, a huge number of diversity of connected assets now exploding, and that's causing pretty much chaos <laughs> as it goes to the CMDB. So they are trying to clean up the CMDB. They're trying to get a really solid picture of what's in their environment. So that's one of the biggest, biggest pains that we see, and that's exactly what we're trying to solve for here with Armis and ServiceNow and, of course, with ITS. Awesome. We definitely see that a lot. I mean, that's what the whole Service Graph Connector program is is really, really developed for, is to kind of try to, to put some rails on the CMDB and really standardize how, how data comes in. And with a tool like the Service Graph Connector for Armis, since it's populating so many different classes, you know, the fact that the CMDB can, can be such a mess and have so many pre-existing issues can definitely 
impact the success of any future integrations. Uh, we found, you know, during some of our early beta testing with the integration that, you know, when customers do have those, those CMDB quality issues or CMDB customizations, they may not get all of the data that they're expecting out of the integration. You know, there, there could be a lot of data that they're seeing in the Armis platform that's not necessarily making it through to service now. Uh, we also found that, you know, it, it may not be immediately apparent why that data is not coming through. Sometimes it might show up as IRE errors, uh, which might seem kind of like a code issue, but in reality, a lot of these issues are just down to pre-existing uh, data issues in the CMDB. And that's really why we built this service graph readiness tool to try to highlight some of those issues. The, the tool can, can report on a lot of the issues which can impact the success of any service graph connector, including the service graph connector for RMS. Uh, Andrea is a developer on my team who built the service graph readiness tool. Andrea, can you walk us through the tool? Yeah, let's take a look at the tool. Starting with the guided setup, there is not actually a lot that has to be configured here. Uh, so our first couple slides are here just to give you a general overview of the tool and what we hope to achieve. This last slide does require some small interactions. These scheduled jobs are used to gather the relevant data in your environment and will need to be run before we can begin. Once you've executed these jobs, you'll be redirected to the dashboard, which is where the meat and potatoes of this application lives. So now we're looking at the ITS Service Graph Readiness Tool dashboard. Uh, these are all of the metrics that we've gathered based on our previous experience with building the Service Graph Connector for Armis. Each of these individual data points have the potential to cause undesired behavior when using Service Graph Connectors. At a high level, let's real quick go over the potential impacts. So starting with duplicate CIs, depending on your settings, the IRE may only update the oldest record in your CMDB or it may update none of them. Because of this, it's recommended to review and delete duplicate CIs in your environment. Moving on to custom CI classes, ServiceNow recommends staying as out of the box as possible. If you have any custom classes with any custom attributes, you risk losing data during CI reclassifications. And additionally, other discovery sources could duplicate this data if they are conflicting identification rules. That leads me into classes without IRE rules. Uh, the IRE cannot insert directly into CMDB classes without identification rules. We saw this impact several classes when we were working on the service graph connector for Armis. For example, the HVAC class had no IRE rules at the time of development and records were not able to be inserted even when data was available. Moving on to data precedence rules, these can block certain attributes or entire classes from being updated depending on the rules in your environment. These are added as quality gates, but may need to be modified over time to accommodate new discovery sources. Mandatory fields. It is considered best practice to mark fields as recommended instead of mandatory as any required fields will block record inserts if those mandatory attributes are null. And then finally, moving on to possible custom IRE rules. When service graph connectors are developed, they typically target out-of-the-box IRE rules. Therefore, it's best to not customize these rules unless necessary. For example, going back to the HVAC example from the uh, classes without IRE rules. We've included the context for each of these metrics under the learn more link on this dashboard. So the dashboard metrics give you insights into a lot of the potential issues that can impede successful imports. There are also a number of system properties that can affect import behavior. Andrea, can you pop out the settings panel? So for example, some of these IRE settings determine whether integrations can reclassify CIs via upgrade or downgrade. For these, we wouldn't want to make blanket recommendations about settings changes without better understanding the underlying data because they could potentially lead to the loss of custom attributes or class specific data. For example, if you have CIs in a custom class and have custom columns, it would generally be recommended to upgrade or downgrade that data into an out-of-box table. We would always want to examine what details, if any, would be lost before proceeding with those changes. Since these settings can potentially have a big impact on existing data, we just include this panel to give visibility into your configurations. You can use this to provide additional context while workshopping CMDB discovery strategies. Yeah, thanks, Jay. I think the bottom line here is, as we discussed earlier, Armis is providing such a richness and diversity to these new asset classes. 
it's going to be super important to run the ITS service graph readiness tool before implementing the connector because you want to get as much out of Armus as possible, just making sure you're going to get the right results as you're expecting. So I think bottom line, again, is the tool is going to give you a better idea of what's going on and potentially remove any potential issues down the road. And if you are using the readiness tool and you need recommendations or help interpreting results, you can use the get help form inside the application. And one of ITS's CMDB experts will reach out to help. We have elite practitioners with decades of experience designing and populating the CMDB. And if you need to get help, you can easily navigate to this form by using the contact us link up at the header. If you want to learn more about today's discussion, please go to www.itsdelivers.com forward slash contact, and we will be in touch shortly. Jay, Andrea, and Peter, thanks again for speaking today, and thank you all for joining. We look forward to continuing the conversation. Have a great day.